Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the big board. Thought we'd have a quick little look at two or three things that are in the house as of uh, a couple of days ago. <coughs> Picked this up in Seattle at the Game On Con. And it was originally marked for $15 and marked down to 8 And then I was chatting with Dick, uh, the guy who was selling it. And he's like, oh, you just take it. You just take it and play it and do a video. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. And then uh, later on we talked again and we played some lock and load. And he just chopped it in my hands and said, I'm not taking any money. So uh, here we are with Global War. This game has a horrible reputation. Uh... Of course, perhaps back in the day when you played it for the first time, you didn't know that it was bad. Uh, but there are some, there's some errata out for it. And you may wonder why I wanted to get it. But I like the cover art, number one. Number two, I just think it's an interesting interesting idea. And this is one of those games where you're going you're gonna to try it out and, and see what it was all about back, back in the day. And that, that sort of intrigued me. It intrigued me because we have... You know, a pretty big naval game, a fairly large uh, land-based game. I mean, you can already, even just a quick look here, we can see, look at all these Japanese armored units, right? Even though they're ones and twos, and we know that that's probably a little ahistorical, right? Um, you know, this rule book's not in the best of condition, but it's uh, obviously a well-played copy and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, there's production spirals and there's uh, some charts you've got to keep track of and bits and pieces, but it's really pretty straightforward. And it's a lesson for rule book writers of, uh, of today that you can be concise if you want to be. 16 pages of rules, including designer notes, and this game deals with naval production, army production, uh, combat, movement. Now, obviously, it's all in the templated format of the SBI titles of the time. But it's pretty interesting that they managed to get a pretty clear and concise set of rules out without too much errata. Whether or not the game actually works is a whole other thing. That's that's the design principles, and you'll, you'll see more about that in a second. Uh, but I think it's instructive to us that we can do better with our rule books if we try. Uh, very, this is a integrated uh, turn record and production chart, so it's pretty, pretty slick. Look, it's pretty slick looking. It's almost as sexy and uh, bewildering as the Great Production Spiral from War in Europe. Okay, let's have a look at these maps. You'll, you'll get a kick out of this, All right? So. There's Australia. It almost looks like Australia. There's Australia. It's got these funky outlines around them and all the islands down there. And I don't think you can even see Guadalcanal. Uh, no, it's not there. So it doesn't matter. You know, Japan is a handful of little hexes there. One, two, three. You can, and a couple of little, you know, the islands and whatnot. And now here's the interesting thing. When you, when you, you know, kick this game off. I don't even know why Africa's in this, but it is. Uh, let's open this up check out Europe because you know you're going to want to see that right so here's Europe you know Germany is a handful of hexes and there's uh, the Belgian Netherlands and France and France is four or five hexes here and there's there's tiny old England so you're not going to get the nuance and detail of course of the you know uh, different cities and countries falling within specific time periods, but I think really what you're going to do is get a big, a big picture, big picture view of of a war, <laughs> a global war, and have some fun with it. And that's my intention here. I'm not looking to uh, try and recreate World War II. I don't know why would you get go down here. It's probably production stuff down here that we can do. I don't, really, I don't know. I haven't read the rules. I, I've skimmed through the rules, and they're basically. Uh, straight up, uh, you know, Zox make you stop. Combat is uh, not mandatory, and uh, movement is, you know, the typical hex by hex. And and you know, obviously, combat is a straight up uh, odds thing. Whereas there's differentials for uh, actually, uh, it's differentials for both sides. Uh, now that I think about it, so yeah, in fact, here's a little chart down here. Yeah, so it's you you add up your combat factors and work out a differential and you take step losses. 
nice summary here of everything. So it's you know it's a cute old game. Uh, we're going to have a look at it. We're not going to we're not looking to uh, not looking to find a find anything you know magical about it. A lot of counters, right? Look at that. Fair few counters. So we'll we'll have a look at this at some point as I wrap up the chronological walkthrough of World War II. We'll find that we're, we're going to spend a fair bit of time with some games that are at this scale, at this strategic scale, and uh, just sort of get a feel for the big picture once we wrap up all of the all of the different combat uh, theaters and major campaigns that I have games for in the World War Two World War Two era. Where right now we're doing little little wrap up titles from. Uh, 1940, the winter of 1943, and we're doing some early 44 stuff. We've got the pocket at Falaise uh, set up. We've got we've played some Normandy-based titles, so we're we're grinding through it. Uh, I may also drop back and try and uh, do some more titles in the 1940s uh, time period as well as we go. So anyway, look, uh, let's see. Um, is that and we picked up this as well I, I picked up this in a pay it forward actually I uh, I, I, I was curious about this because it's a multiplayer game and uh, maybe I can convince some guys here to play it so I want, because it was relatively inexpensive I, uh, i.e. it was just me swapping out a title for it I thought I'd grab this guy uh, once again it's that high sort of high scale stuff it's uh, or, or telescoped out type of thing it's unpunched which is pretty cute uh, pretty nice big hexes uh, you deal with there's two scenarios basically the first crusade and the third crusade lots of historical notes there's probably 10 pages of historical notes uh, might be worth a good read if you're interested in it and uh, you know by faction by nation specific rules and your charting movement and things like that plotting movement and to me, this is almost like a precursor of uh, uh, Richard Berg's early, potentially early, early uh, inclinations around the Carthage uh, ancient worlds system, but, but clearly very different because it's a different scale and all that sort of fun stuff. So that's a, that's, I think it's done in seasons versus anything else. So we have that to explore at some point in the future. You know, the box is in pretty good shape. Actually, I found that if you use a damp cloth, you can often clean these up a little bit. I'm not going to mess with that right now. Now, this guy, grab this because this is one of these designer editions with a matter of map. And while this is also not necessarily the most amazing title either, um, this guy's punched unfortunately, so we've got to sort that little peck ahead out. But. Uh, Got the Arada here, but we do have this lovely mounted map. It's kind of like my Panzer Group Gadarian game. I'm going to try not to break the map. But there we, once again, we have a strayer on the right hand side, down the bottom. And one more map here. I'll show you in a second if I can get it open carefully. Once again, a, a tiny Europe, so it gives the Soviets a chance to. Russian, perhaps. In fact, you you look at this and go, hmm, man, that sucker looks a lot like uh, the last map Kevin just had out, <laughs> and I think it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, we now just said we have Western Europe and Eastern Europe, so we can't go exactly, but we can see that the U United Kingdom is is uh, two hexes and Ireland is a hex. Uh, and we can see that Africa is about the same size as well, and then all the industrial business and the and the, sh the the shipping lines and all the rest of it is all all pretty identical. Uh, I have not looked at the rules on this boy. Um, we're just going to goof around with it. Once again, it is a real lean, tight rule set. Uh, the fair bit of a rider on this guy. Uh, once again, yeah, 16 pages of rules. And it'd be interesting to almost go, you know, line by line with this guy. Uh, you know, all, the, all this is identical, right? Uh, counter descriptions, zones of control, how to move units, stacking of units, combat, land supply. And six pages in, I know how to move, I know how to fight, I know how to stack my units, 
and I know how to uh, get into supply. There are naval rules, which I'm sure they're going to be very similar to the other system. And then there's some, you know, production bits and pieces as well, right? And then uh, let's see how many scenarios there are. I don't even know. There's some sort of general. There's the standard scenario. And I guess a not so standard scenario, 1984 scenario, three player. There we go. So I bet you this will play probably identically to <laughs> to the other uh, to the other game, and that will be fun to do a compare and contrast against, right? But this has, this does have a nice amount of map, so I, I'm kind of kind of excited about that. And yeah, it's gonna look good on the shelf, right? All those nukes. Look at look at this artwork on the box here. I didn't check to see who did the artwork on the box, but. I think that looks that looks spectacular. 1976 to 1984. Who thinks that war's going to take that long? Not me. Yeah, graphic design was done by obviously the god of graphic design back in those days, Remen Simonson. Simonson. And it's a, and then it's a Dunnigan design. But there you go. I don't know who did the box art. I was, thought maybe uh, Roger might have done the box art, but we don't know for sure. So anyway, just a quick look. Three new, three new titles in the house. Thought I'd uh, share those with you. You guys take it easy. And uh, we'll try and get some live play in this week at some point. I've kind of got my family healthy again. So we can look forward to doing some of that real soon. Take care.